Good evening, everyone, and thank you for getting here on time and welcome to tonight's webinar where literally I'm just going to talk about if you are taking SBL for the first time, when when should you take it? Should you take it in March or, or should you take it in June? And uh, a few people have sent me some questions, uh, which I will share with you later. And please, if you do have any questions, just put them in the chat box and I'll try and deal with them uh, as soon as I can. So just literally pop a little question in the chat box and I will deal with it. So um, some of this you may have picked up if you follow me on my YouTube channel, but if you haven't, no problem. I will give a brief overview. The first thing I just want to make clear to you is how different SBL is. Yep. And to use the words of the examining team, uh, SBL, unlike pretty much all the other ACCA strategic level papers, is much more of an integrated exam asking you to behave as a strategic leader, asking you to behave like you behave in the workplace. Yep. A lot of the other exams require you to acquire lots of technical knowledge and then apply them. Sadly, AI is going to replace all of that skill going forward. And the only skill it will not be able to replace is the skill that SBL is trying to develop. So you're going to be involved in a practical role play exam, which reflects how, <coughs> excuse me, you might behave in the workplace. So that's the words of the examining team, not me. But I've done lots of work with training both tutors and um uh, students on, on how to pass SBL on behalf of the ACCA. And yeah, that's where I've got that from, from the examining team. So uh, very quickly, I think it's important uh, why uh, AC ACCA have introduced strategic business leader. I've kind of just said it really in the fact that AI is going to take away a lot of these technical skills, but that doesn't mean uh, the accountant's role is no more. It's definitely uh, being enhanced by AI, but we need to be able to explain and analyze and be skeptical. All of those skills that SBL will be um, testing. So there's, as I've just said, there's been change. To deal with that change, we need new capabilities and competencies. And those capabilities and competencies are going to be dealt with in SBL. There's a, a picture here or a slide here of what the syllabus covers. It's not a technical exam, but these technical areas which we have on here are very useful if we are aware of them to use as a catalyst to help us create structures to help us write good answers on SPL. But those answers, I must stress, need to be applied answers and not regurgitation of theory. If you just regurgitate theory, no marks. So that's what it's about. What's the exam like? Well, again, the exam is quite different. You've got pre-seen material released two weeks before the exam. Um, in the exam, you will then be given additional exhibits, which will complement the pre-seen material, which basically gives you a scenario of what's happening in a particular industry or sector. The exam is three hours, 15 minutes. There's 80 technical marks and 20 professional skills marks. And remember, we only need 50 to pass. Yep, only need 50. And everything's based on the same scenario. And what we need to do, as I've just said, is we, we acquire some technical knowledge, but we don't just flatly regurgitate that knowledge. We apply it in the context of the question. And if we do that, we'll do really well. Okay, so that is your exam. Um, do we have any questions so far? Let me have a quick look. I don't think so. But as I say, just pop those questions in the chat box and I will answer. Um, okay. A couple of people just joining. If you're just joining, this is recorded. So you can look at the recording afterwards. Okay. Uh, what about the pre-seen material then? A lot of people, this has been introduced from September 2023 
And uh, the purpose of it is to help you familiarize yourself with the the kind of context of the case. It's a fictional case, but there will be terminologies which you may not be familiar with. You may not be familiar with the industry. And that's what the pre-scene does. If you really want to know more about the pre-scene, if you go on my YouTube channel, I've recorded a whole video on how we use the pre-scene. And I also recorded a video after the December exam, how if you've done my uh, review, like I asked you to do, you would have got most of the questions in the exam. Yeah, but... Look at that on the other video. Tonight, I'm just here to answer questions and reassure. Yep. The pre-scene cannot be taken into the exam. We get a fresh copy on the day of the exam, but we, we can thoroughly digest it. And I actually write a mock exam based on that pre-scene material. So, um, yeah. Pretty much what I've just said. In the exam, you'll get more exhibits. You'll be asked to require to do tasks and a fresh version of the pre-scene. As it's a workplace orientated uh, exam, you'll be asked to use things like, uh, or asked to use things like emails, memos, present slides, present an article, that kind of thing. Yep, that's what you're gonna have to do. And you will also be given exhibits which will include risk registers, newspaper articles, chairman statements, minutes from meetings, just like we would get in the real workplace. So we're just trying to, you know, understand what it's like. That's what it's like. Uh, the difference, I think, if I summarize it, I think you've got it so far. It's not an exam where we regurgitate and require to learn stuff. We have knowledge that the understanding of enables us to apply in the context of the scenario. So the key difference is, um, you know, when I ask students, you know, what, what's the difference? Uh, they all say, oh, it's so long. It's a big case study. Um, well, not really. The key difference is the rationale of the paper. Yep. And, um, yeah, that's basically how, how it's focused, what it's getting you to do. It's about application, not regurgitation. You're asked to behave in the workplace and you're asked also to use professionalism, which means, you know, act in a professional manner. That doesn't mean do report format. It means tailor your communication style to who you're talking to. So if someone's not an accountant, you wouldn't be saying EBITDA. Uh, think about the... Um, kind of technical content, but don't just learn it and regurgitate it. Use it to help you um, apply and develop points. Okay. So again, you can, if you're interested, learn more about this by going onto the ACCA website, going onto the student accountant, or, or you can get an app on your phone and look at some of my articles I've written on there on exam preparation. Yep. I think, you know, we'll talk in a moment um, when we actually think about doing the exam. Um, before we do it, resources that you can use. Um, Accounting Business Magazine keeps you in tune with what's going on. There's Professional Insights section. Here's an example of some of the articles you might find. And also, I think something you have to do, but is definitely really helpful for SPL, is the Ethics and Professional Skills module, which was updated a few years ago. And um, yeah, do that if you haven't already done it. I'm not saying you have to do it before you do SPL, but it definitely complements the mindset you need to use when doing SPL exams. So that's what we need. I don't know whether there is any questions on any of that. No. Okay. Okay. So the question is, should I do it in March? Should I do it in June? Well, there's not an easy answer to that. Uh, for example, if you've got year end, if you've got loads of work on, if you're getting married uh, and you want to have a nice Christmas, maybe do it in June. But personally, if I was you, and, and this is just my view, I would want to pass my exam as soon as possible. There's no fun being a part qualified accountant. Yeah, you can probably easily double, often triple your salary within five years of qualifying. Yep, just because you get a bit of paper. So if it's me, I want to get there as quickly as possible. But, you know, think about the other things going on in your life. Certainly, if you were to start studying now, 
I, I would be taking lots of people onto my course for March. You can pass this exam without too much effort. Yeah. Equally, March, uh, sorry, June, you can as well if you want to take it a bit more steady. But me, I'd want to get it out of the way as quickly as possible. Some people might wait till the results, which are about the third week in Jan. You're getting tight then. You're getting tight. Some people who are prepared to commit and work really hard, actually, well, not some, quite a lot of my students still pass then. But if I was saying, what should you do? I would start sooner rather than later. I would get into the study habit sooner rather than later. And that's how I'm going to more easily pass my exam. But again, everyone's different. Year end might be, for many of you, a bit of a burden. It might make studying difficult. But again, I would try and manage my manager and just say, look, I'm doing my exams. I will definitely, you know, work my guts out for you nine till six. But if you let me come into work a couple of hours early, two hours, five days, 10 hours, that's loads of time to get on with SPL. But yeah, I leave that one to you. Yeah. If you want to find out more about um, the changes that came in in September 2023, again, I have done a whole um, video on this, which you can find on my YouTube channel, ACCA, Sean Purcell, SPL. So have a look at that. But I, I've made a couple of answers to some of the questions I've received in advance, but I've also received a couple which I haven't done slides in. So just bear with me a moment and I'll just um, answer a couple of questions. And then if you have any, put them in the box. Um, well, first question I've answered, is there still time to do it in March? Yes, there is. I know sometimes on the technical papers like tax, where there's loads to learn, some tax you just say, oh, it's getting a bit close now. That's not the case with SBL. Uh, I've made SBL very concentrated to help you understand it more quickly. To me, it's like driving a car. Yeah, you learn and get better with practice. I'll give you lots of feedback. Um, what's the difference between my Platinum course and my Platinum Plus course? Well, someone else I asked in advance, what, what does my Platinum? I'll, I'll explain that with a slide in a moment. But um, a Platinum Plus course is exactly the same as the Platinum. I, I only have a few spaces on that each time. And people who tend to uh, purchase that tend to use me as their coach. We have a little Zoom chat, a regular Zoom chat. There's no obligation to have one. Some people just buy it as an insurance to have a Zoom chat. But in terms of technical content that you get on a Platinum course compared to a Platinum Plus, it's exactly the same. But you do purchase some zoom time with me so that's that's a difference there can i just do a revision uh you can you can that's up to you um people tend to not pull their finger out for revision though maybe after the results um if you've done a fully comprehensive course you're fully confident with all of your knowledge and technical content and you've had lots of practice, yeah, do a revision. Why not? Um, but I, I'd say at this stage in the game, you've got time to do a platinum course. And, and for not a lot more money, you get an extra mock, you get a pass assurance, you get more homework. You get those also on revision, but you get more of them on a platinum uh, course. So my advice would be to do that. But again, it's up to you. I don't know whether you have any comments or Feedback on that. Okay. Okay. All right. A couple of questions I got a bit more uh, in advance was what, what, what happens on a platinum course? What is included on it? How does it differ to other courses? Well, you'll just have to compare this with other courses, but um, I created, I've created a flexible course. I'm going to have to cough again. I'm really sorry. <clears throat> sorry. I've created a flexible course. 90 professionally recorded videos. You can watch these as many times as you want. Try to keep them to no more than a half an hour long. Um, I've got about eight pieces of marked homework on this course, which is marked by real ACCA um, markers. I also have three fully time mocks, which aren't done on Excel or you know Word. They're done on the same platform as you will be doing your exam. 
the ACCA CBE platform. And again, they are going to be marked by real ACCA SPL markers. You can contact me. So the flexibility comes. You can digest these videos whenever you want. And should you want to ask me any questions anytime, whenever, you have me on your WhatsApp all the way up until the day of the exam. Yep. So you can message me as many times as you want, asking questions on the video that I provided. For the um, uh, mocks, we will do a full debrief on video, but we'll also have a Zoom chat. And if you do the mocks and if you do the homework, you can do have a pass assurance, which basically means you can do that as long as you get 40 or more, because normally people who don't get more than 40 may not have put as much work in as they should do. But if you do that, if you get 40 or more, you can do everything again for free. You might have had a bad day, but you can get a, a whole new load of mocks that get marked personally. And those mocks don't just get marked uh, with ticks. You get comprehensive feedback. OK, so in terms of the mocks, three full never been seen before. The final one is going to use the pre-seen material. So if you're taking the exam in March 24, it will be March 24 pre-seen material. If you're taking it in June, it will be June. Uh, these, what happens? Well, these mocks come out, well, the pre-seen comes out two weeks. So literally, I don't have any sleep for two or three days. I create a mock, which I believe will be reflective of what the real exam will be. I load that up onto the ACCA CBE platform. I debrief all the ACCA markers on how students should be answering it. I create a debrief video for students. I create a debrief video for markers. I create a marking scheme. I create a realistic answer. And you can uh, that can be part of, well, it's the same for the other three mocks as well, all on the CBE platform. But I think the key thing is a lot of people do mocks and they get ticks and all. Oh, well done, you got 52. Uh, I, I give quite a lot of written feedback on what you need to do. So that's the difference. OK, um, hopefully that helps. As with all questions on the course, you get lots and lots of video debrief. And as well as that video debrief. It's a little gremlin there. You get realistic answers. So those realistic answers, sometimes the ACCA, if you look at past papers, they give answers, but those answers often have a tutorial purpose uh, and maybe beyond what a student will be expected to do in the real exam. So I create realistic answers to uh, past exam questions. And yeah, we'll have a Zoom debrief. OK, so that answers a couple of you asked, but can I just explain about mocks, explain about the course? Um, how do you contact me? Well, hopefully you can. Well, I won't make you put it in the chat box, but if you've been listening, just WhatsApp me. Yep. Right up to the day of the exam. And we also have personal Zooms together, uh, mainly about mocks and chats. I also create a study buddy group for you so you can chat with fellow students on your course. I tend to keep out of that, but that's quite useful. Students, if they've got problems with exam registration and stuff like that, that's pretty useful. So that's it, really. Keeping it short and sweet, just giving you a little bit of a nudge. Christmas is coming. Um, in no time, it will be like January the 10th. And you think, where has that time gone? Well, that's three weeks that will have gone by. Three weeks where you could be making study a habit. Three weeks where you could be acquiring SBL knowledge. That knowledge would then be very useful to help build so you could apply. Yeah, I'd say get on with it. Yeah, make sure you take action. Yeah, and yeah, make sure you do that. And make sure you get at least one mock marked to time. To not do mocks is like taking a driving test without getting in a car beforehand. You'd be crazy. OK, so um, you've obviously got my email. Follow me on LinkedIn. I put an awful lot on LinkedIn. I put a lot on YouTube. If you like to digest stuff by podcast, I'm happy to record podcasts that you want as well as the ones that are already there i try to you know create a regular podcast but if you want me to speak about anything specific let me know um just before we call it um 
Louise asks, will we be provided with a plan which we can follow in order to stay focused on what we should be each time in terms of pre-recorded videos? Um, I don't say you must do something on a Tuesday because the nature of my students is that they're, they're quite global and the course is flexible. Um, I, I, I give you kind of milestones along the road where you should be by a certain point. So I would say, you know, by this week, you should have covered this, but I'm not going to, I, I also check all my students are engaging with the platform. So I can see from my end through technology, how much time you're spending on the platform and anyone that doesn't spend enough time, as far as I'm concerned, will get a friendly reminder from me and just to check that everything is all right. But I'm not going to kind of uh, padlock you into Monday night at 6.30, you must do two hours. Uh, I think at the strategic professional stage, uh, hopefully, you know, you've got an ability to organize yourself a little bit. And that's key, really. The key is to develop a timetable of living, not a timetable of study, because you need to break it up between work, rest and play. And if you can't do that, well, maybe you're not ready to pass SPL. I'll certainly give you um, milestones and say that it needs to be done by this. When we get into revision, it's a little bit different. So the last kind of five weeks, I want you to do this by this date, this by this date, this by this date. But people join the course at different times uh, and to allow people flexibility. For example, some people have been on my March course now for maybe six or seven weeks. Some people will be joining next week and will still get through everything and do really well. So um, on the tuition stage, I call it tuition stage, but it's like the knowledge acquisition stage, which probably goes up to towards the end of January. Um, I, I, I just put some milestones of what should be achieved by a certain date. But I, I don't say this is for this day. This is for this day. If you really want it, you can get in contact with me or we can have a chat. But as a general rule, that's not what I do. OK, does that does that answer that one? OK, Louisa? OK, OK. All righty. Um, well, um, if you don't have any more questions, um, I won't take any more of your valuable time. Um, thanks for um, your input. Thanks for your questions prior to this taking place. Um, my bit of advice would be get on with it. Yeah, I know Christmas is coming, but you can still maybe sacrifice an hour a day at Christmas and acquire an awful lot of knowledge, which will get you to becoming a qualified accountant much, much quicker. Yeah. Have a lovely Christmas. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your questions. And if you have any questions, WhatsApp me. Just see how quick I do reply. Okay. Thank you.